Initially when I started, I didn't know what CrossFit was at all, and I, I knew very little about Olympic lifting. So, but I initially found out about it because I wanted to learn Olympic lifting. So then when I, when I came and I was introduced to both, I wanted to do both. I still want to do the lifting because I feel like um, I just have this thing where I want to try to get stronger. But I also realized that the CrossFit was good as far as the, you know, the, um, the muscular endurance and learning other skills. I got interested in some of the gymnastic skills and, um, you know, it gave me other goals to work on and other things to get good at. And, um, and I liked the idea of, of having different durations of workouts. I still like the shorter ones just because I'm biased with that. I, I hate running and I still hate running. But I, I mean, I know it's good to do it sometimes. When I started, I didn't know, I didn't have any kind of weight in mind. I, I just, I wanted to get better. I remember when I started, um, one thing that was holding me back for a while was fear of the bar overhead. So it took me a long time to actually land in a squat with the, with the snatch. I was mostly powering them a lot. Um, so that progress was pretty slow. The clean was is my best one. I have less fear with that, but the jerk is also was another issue. And I think I, I liked doing it, so I just kept going. I I was pretty patient, even, you know, doing all the reps and the drills and the auxiliary movements. And then um, I never actually thought about competing. And then when I did the local competitions, I think what that did for me, finally going to one, is I realized that. Getting over the nervousness was it was it was good for me to do that. You know, I still felt like I wasn't good enough or I wouldn't be able to do the lift right, but I realize it's just better for someone. Even if you think you just start, it doesn't matter. I think you should just go to a competition. It kind of puts things in perspective. Up, up, up. When I first qualified for the USA National one, the American Open, I, I didn't know anything about them, that everyone that goes to those wears the singlet. At the open competitions I'd been to, it's mixed. People could wear a singlet. They might wear just a regular t-shirt and shorts or pants or whatever. Um, but for that, they wear the singlet. So they thought, well, you could probably still wear one, but have something underneath. Or, you know, we'll just, we'll talk with the committee. The, main issue was that you know you had to wear what everyone was wearing which is this the singlet which is it had to be body tight um, and it had to be cut off at the arms and the legs and no headscarf so that was that initial issue and so they said yeah you can compete they weren't denying me that says if you do you have to wear that you can't not wear it otherwise you wouldn't be able to lift even if your scores weren't going to count you still can't participate I took some time just to think about things and see, well, should I do anything about this or not? And I talked to some people and, you know, because Olympic weightlifting is an Olympic sport, you know, and the idea of the Olympics is you want to include as many people as you can. And the Ted Stevens Act, I talked to lawyers and things and they said, well, you know, it's something that you could try. You could just try writing a letter and explaining. I did, you know, I'm just one person, so I didn't really know if I should even do anything or not, but, um, then my story got passed around, my situation, and it got to a human rights group. They do some other things, it's called CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, and they said, well, you know, we'd like to help you, we can talk to the Olympic Committee and see what we can do on your behalf. I didn't know that my situation was that big because I didn't have other examples at the time of and that's why I had a hard time because I didn't know what examples I had very few examples I could give of women in sports that dressed this way it was kind of surreal I mean it's still surreal I think because I I never would have expected that to happen and then I think as this was happening I was learning more about the other issues involved like at the time of the ruling there was the Iranian women's soccer team issue with FIFA. And I had known a little bit about it, but I didn't realize the history behind it or the stories and how there were other women who had other issues where uh, people were saying that, you know, you can't participate in the sport unless you dress the same way as everybody else. And, um, so I felt like because I have this 
guess I could call it a platform. It's still kind of, I mean, I'm a little bit more used to it now, talking to people and being in front of the camera, but at that time, I was trying to encourage myself and my friend who was helping me, she's a lawyer, she's like, just try to keep pushing yourself, even though you're not used to this kind of thing, because not everyone is going to have this opportunity, and I felt like it was kind of a obligation, if it's of a benefit, that I should keep sharing my story, and if it's going to help with the global issues and other women, I should just keep doing it. With the competition stuff now that this is happening, people are realizing that or they're, they're appreciating the issue and I've gotten, thankfully I've gotten some support for when I went to nationals from the community financially and then for Worlds, um, I'm, I'm now fully funded to go. So, and uh, there are communities that are saying like, you know, we'll help you make your budget and um, we'll help you for as many competitions you want to go to as far as, you know, the travel expenses and the lodging and your training and everything. So I'm happy about that because that's definitely going to make it easier for me to still be able to focus on that, but it'll save me some time not having to worry about the financial issues. When I was being uh, interviewed, a lot of people would ask, oh, do you, you, know, you want to go to the Olympics? Or are you trying to go to the Olympics? And I said, sure, I mean, I'd like to go, but I'm definitely not in a position where I'm lifting enough to be at the top of my of my sport or my weight class, definitely. I mean, there's a, you know, there's a gap for that. But, you know, I didn't want to be negative. I said, well, sure, I always aspire to do, to do better. So then when that idea came up and it seemed like with a lot of the international news, they were really into it like, oh, this is, you know, this is cool and hey, do you think you'll go to the Olympics? And then I found out there is a Pakistan Weightlifting Federation, but they only have men. And he talked to them about it, he said, yeah, we only have men on the team. There's never been a woman that expressed interest and they, you know, since my news was global, they heard about me and then they saw my website and videos and my training and everything and they said, and I, I told him I said I was born in the USA and said, well, if, you know, we'd be happy to have her represent Pakistan and, uh, and September 1st is the deadline for Worlds, so they just went ahead and registered me to get the deadline and I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to Worlds. So that was also kind of sudden, but um, I had at least more time than the two weeks with Nationals. I would really like to PR, but I don't know if it will happen. Really the ultimate goal is that I'm, I'm going and participating and I'm making the appearance for, uh, for Worlds representing Pakistan.